Hey guys, all right, hey guys, Aaron Danton here. Uh, so I was, uh, the, uh, you know, I've been hearing it come up often about astro projecting. Um, one of the deliverance ministries I watch, uh, Isaiah Saldivar, was talking about astro projecting and teleportation even. And then he actually pointed out that Philip, um, after he had, had baptized the Ethiopian, oh, Ethiopian um, teleported. And uh, so, uh, you know, um, I had said, you know, that I was able to astro project sometimes, not all the time. It takes some real focus and uh, inner peace to be able to do it. But, um, and a want, you know, it was only through um, God and Jesus that I was able to see, you know, get my testimony in the first place, which was uh, my spirit going to the beginning of time uh, to be with God. Because for some odd reason, I just knew, you know, if there's places you can find God, I mean, he tells you where you can find him, you know, <laughs> uh, if you want to find him in his presence on earth, you know, it's at the beginning. If you want to find him in his presence on earth, it's at the end. So, um, um, you know, those are gifts of the spirit and, um, a lot of people come against those types of things because, um, you know, like prophesying, seer, um, speaking in tongues, a lot of, I shouldn't say that people, it's, it's a spirit that comes against them. You know, the religious spirit comes against the gifts of the spirit because the religious spirit is, has none, you know, uh, no gifts that it can, it can share with people um, because it is of the the Antichrist um, and if you have the Antichrist spirit then you won't you know it's uh, it's it's a, your house divided uh, you're saved by Jesus because you've asked Jesus to be your Savior Lord and Savior and you just got the Antichrist spirit so you can't cast the Antichrist spirit out of somebody because you harbor it there's no power in casting itself out um, it has, you have to be a house of one you know, which is um, when Jesus said the Lord your God is one, he meant he had conquered everybody, he is one. Uh, you can cast out any spirit by him. You can um, use any of the gifts of the spirit through him um, because he was Lord of lords and king of kings. So he, they have to obey him. So if he tells the spirit, let them speak tongues, that spirit will let that person in their living soul hear the tongues to speak uh, through their eternal spirit that sit down in the throne with every other eternal spirit that sit down in the throne with Jesus so all the gifts are combined in Jesus the Lord your God is one um, so um, and so part of my testimony is also that uh, um, God was always with me just, uh, there's another person I know right now, uh, uh, he, he says that, you know, as well, that God never left him. And, uh, so after I was saved, after I was born again, you know, my, my eternal spirit sat down in the throne with, with Jesus, giving me access to my eternal spirit through Jesus, my eternal spirit through Jesus alone there's no other way to access your eternal spirit so uh, uh, I was looking back on my life and realized God was there all along as well there was a time when uh, I was about four or five and, and I was living in Hawaii with my mom um, and I was swimming in uh, Ala Moana Bay by the Ala Moana Shopping Center I forget what the name of the actual bay is. I could have looked it up beforehand, but um, uh, I got caught in a, in a current that was pulling me out, and I was about to go past the edge of the bay in the open sea, and I heard in my extrasensory perceptions of hearing God, heard, get off the surfboard and put your feet down. So I got off the surfboard because I was out paddling, just paddling around in the, in the bay on my, on my cousin's surfboard. And so I did, and sure enough, out in the middle of what should have been open ocean was a rock. 
And so I stood on it and just waited. I didn't know what else to do because I knew I couldn't paddle fast enough to get away from the current. And, and I started asking God at the time to send somebody and uh, to help me. <laughs> uh, but you don't really realize when you're that young, you're praying to God. Um, but maybe you do. And uh, so then my cousin came paddling out and grabbed me up and took me back in on a different surfboard and had to drag his own surfboard back too. <laughs> um, so, you know, God is always there for you. Um, he's a good God. He's only good. And um, so when these gifts of the Spirit come up and, you know, the religious spirit is trying to tell you, no, that's not real. That doesn't, that's the Antichrist trying to work against your anointings from heaven. Because, you know, you're a Christian, you have anointings from heaven. That's what uh, Christ literally means, anointed from heaven. So Jesus means Savior. You can go find that in Matthew 1, where it says, you know, for he would be a Savior to his people. So that's what Jesus means. And then you can go find um, the part about uh, being anointed from heaven, the Christ, Messiah, Hamashiach, those all mean anointed from heaven. And that's who, you know, the rabbis were always asking, are you, are you the anointed one from heaven? Because um, they know. Rabbis actually know there's supposed to be somebody that has anointings from heaven always on earth. But not everybody recognizes that. I don't know why it's a big secret. And then he, that person can share his gifts or her gifts. It could be a woman. Who knows? There is no difference between man and woman in heaven. Angels. Um, so the dream of the race I had the other day, I got more clarity about that this morning. Um, ended up uh, understanding who's a white uh, Dana Coverstone's dream, even. not my dream. <laughs> the guy in the all white was uh, Joshua. Um, so, and then the multicolored tracksuit guy would have been Jesus. Uh, Joshua was of the Old Testament. Uh, and a lot of people, uh, Jews, believe um, Yeshua is the Savior, the same Joshua is the same as Jesus, so because uh, Joshua means Savior, Yeshua means Savior, Jesus means Savior, so... Um, and so, but in Zechariah 3, it says that, uh, you know, when, uh, the angel of the Lord came, the rock, or the branch, uh, has a rock with uh, seven eyes on it, uh, seven spirits of God. The branch does. Uh, so, and he's a servant of God. The branch is, I call him the branch. <laughs> My servant, uh, or Jesus, God's servant. Um, so, what else was I going to talk about? Oh yeah, so that was the Old Testament Joshua versus the New Testament Jesus race. And, uh, I don't know who the end, so it doesn't it really matter. Um, but even, you know, Joshua, when he was, he had the mantle of Elijah on him. Elijah and Elisha. Because he, uh, when he came to the River Jordan, he parted the River Jordan. Most people don't know that. Or I don't know why it's never really talked about that he parted the River Jordan for the Israelites to cross over into the Promised Land. Israel. It's pretty cool. Um, what else? But yeah, so, and then there was another time I was swimming with my brother. And, uh, or I was, we were out fishing. It was early. And there was only... One other raft on the lake that this morning. That was about 13 at this time. And um, I haven't told too many people this story. But my little brother knows it. It is real. <laughs> so uh, there's this raft. Other two people on this on the lake with us. 
but they all stayed opposite of us and they were these two girls that were our age and they were super cute and whatever and uh, it was getting to be about 9 a.m. the sun was getting up there and it's starting to warm up and I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to camp and get some food Chad and he, he wanted to stay out because he was you know uh, we hadn't caught any fish he was wanting to meet those girls and I was like dude I'm not gonna hang out on the lake hungry and become sunburned because you want to meet those girls who have stayed on the opposite side of the lake which it's about 800 yards one way uh, and about 500 400 yards the other way so they'd always be at least 400 yards 300 yards from us you know so I was like they're too far away um, it was battleground Lake Washington and so I was like fine you can stay out I'll just swim so I, I jumped out of the raft started swimming to shore well, I don't even know like what got a hold of him but he was just learning to swim to barely swim and um, he started drowning and the wind picked up and blew our raft away so there was no way he was getting back to that and he started freaking out and was going under and was I knew he was gonna drown so I swam back I swam back to my little brother um, I had a choice you know swim to shore save myself or swim back and see if I can save my brother I was about 13 at the time and so I swam back and when I got to him, I started trying to swim to shore because the wind picked up again and blew the raft even further away. It was 60, 70 yards away. And so we're struggling and uh, we're both drowning now because I was trying to save him, but he was fighting me and wouldn't let me drag him. He was trying to climb up me because he was getting low on breath, pushing me down further and further. So I just went to the bottom of the lake, looked up, grabbed his feet and pushed him up. And he stood on my hands. And I thought to myself, well, God help me. <laughs> and I started trying to walk to shore. It was, I was like, I'm going to at least give him the best chance I got to, to live. And uh, I'm not even sure. I mean, those girls came from 400 yards away, crowded up our raft and brought it to him. Um... And I, I, all of a sudden he was just gone, and because I, I, I was just, I, trying to get to shore. Um, I didn't even know where I was, <laughs> uh, but God was there, because it probably took them at least 10 minutes to get across the lake to us, and collect up our raft and push it over to my brother. And, uh. Shortly after, I mean, I've seen some crazy things in the spirit realm. Uh, stuff I don't even like talking about because it condemns churches, you know. I saw, I met Satan in church, the past, where the pastor who brought me to salvation had taken me. And I used to wonder why he stayed till the last person walked out of that church every day. He was, he was a retired pastor at the time. He's passed on now. His name is Roger Smith. Uh -oh. But yeah, because uh, every soul matters to God, you know. And I was saying in the previous video, every once in a while, as he's passed on, I know he's a ministering spirit, because I can hear what he used to say to me coming through other people when they're preaching and teaching, which is pretty cool. Um, old Roger Smith, yep. But yeah, so, uh, you know, when people were lost my daughter and you're never closer to God than when you're mourning he comforts you you know and I could hear him as these people were praying over me to, said to me open your eyes open my eyes and they're all possessed by Satan and I could see Satan in every one of them um, it scared me I didn't go back to church for a long time after that but uh, I saw them how Jesus sees them actually Jesus sees and so when they're possessed by Satan that's what he sees Satan he doesn't see the person well maybe he does now I, I, I asked him I asked him I said please don't let me. you have to see people like that it's scary it's I mean I didn't go to church for a long time I was younger you know it was almost 20 years ago now 20 years ago 
a young guy. I lost my daughter in the morning. So uh, it was right after I said the sinner's prayer, asking Jesus, you know, with faith. Um, and just, you know, finished working on the cross, paid for my sins. I asked him to forgive my sins. And uh, so, but I just chalked it up. I was able to just block it all out and just go forward with life at the time. And, and I knew at some point something big was coming. I just wasn't sure what, you know, and uh, I just wanted to be ready. It was about 12 years ago. I uh, prayed to God and asked in the name of Jesus Christ if he's willing and I'm able, um, if I can end and destroy Satan, all the demons and evil in the world and deceptions and lies because I, I mean, I knew Satan was real. I had no doubt. I've never hallucinated. I've never been crazy. I've never been bipolar or anything like that. I've always been solidly grounded here on earth. So when I saw Satan, I knew he was real 100%. There was no turning me from the truth. My hand was, uh, I was sitting idle with my hand on the plow, looking to God. When he said, go, Aaron, I was going to go. Whatever he asked. So... It got, it got bad. And so, uh, uh, I don't mind getting warning dreams, real, you know, future prophecies. It doesn't matter to me as long as it all works out in the end that, um, you know, people come to heaven and a new heaven, a new earth, you know, and, the throne and millennial reign and everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. I don't, whatever. Uh, doesn't. So, um, but yeah, I took my testimony down because uh, not a lot of people are ready for it at times. It worked, but. Things start becoming more and more clear and obvious to everybody around, you know. Um, but yeah. Um, so. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, and then I prayed to God to just know the truth of Him and Jesus Christ one night, and uh, that's uh, my testimony grew a little more, you know, and. Uh, born again, taken to heaven, shown the creation of everything all the way to the lake of fire and I waited with God. And, I mean, this is like what Jonah said, you know, it's like, repent, <laughs> repent. It's like, make straight the way of the Lord. <laughs> you know, the kingdom of God is at hand, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, whatever the season is. Um, so, uh, yeah. And, you know, when I was shown the lake of fire, you know, I waited with God and nobody came at first. And I couldn't understand what it was that went wrong. And it, it was, I think, um, you know, I don't think I was early. I just think that uh, repentance was at hand, you know. So, and that's what I started preaching at first. Like, God is good. That's it. There is no evil in God. There's a separate being for evil that is evil that fell from God's graces his, his name is Lucifer Satan yet the tree in the garden Eden that's good and evil tries to make himself be God you know in Isaiah 14 higher than the angels and God himself you know exalt his throne above God we try to make the claim to be God by telling Eve she would be like God to know good from evil so he's telling her I'm God he's not God trust me God cried when nobody showed up after a lake of fire. I cried. It was the most sorrow I've ever felt in my life. And it was, yeah, you know, I had sorrow because I saw y'all burn too. And so when I felt his sorrow on top of mine, I knew I was feeling God's emotions because I, he was the only other being left. Jesus was in him, and God are one. Jesus and God. Um, so, um, 
I was sad, boy. So, but it's all different now. You start, it was all incrementally. Every every time I made, you know, headway in some way, um, it would push, push a different, uh, it just changed. So I don't know what else to say, just like when Jonah, you know, but who knows what could have been, what would have been, how things would have went, because it's different now. So it doesn't matter to me. And, you know, I'm glad when somebody says, I know Jesus. I'm like, thank God. <laughs> you know? Because there is such a thing as the Antichrist. There is such a thing as Satan. You know, the Antichrist is Satan's son. He's basically tried to rebirth himself in a different way, a different light, so you would see him better. You know, he's... But he's not God. So, uh, may God and Jesus Christ bless um, stay the course. <laughs> stay the course. The race. Uh, all right, you guys. <laughs> Amen.